G'day, how you all going? This is Ian Harris from Australia here, aka Indianapolis, your acrylic guru. Now today, I need a bit of a pointing stick, so I'll um, just get this thing going. Look at that, eh? We've got a bit of a bit of a pointing stick. Now, the size of the canvas is in centimetres. There you go, 42 by 30 centimetres. And for those of you who want to know the colours we're using, they're going up the screen there. They're getting all the way up there like that. Hey, look at them. They're getting right up there. Yeah, so I don't need this brush no more. So I'll um, get rid of that. There we go. That's gone. And now we'll get some paint onto me palette down here. All right. All right. Down here, we're going to have some flow white. Okay, so there's our flowing white paint. Next to that, I want to get some retarder. Okay. There's our puddle of retarder there, all right? All right, we'll start off with our dry canvas. I've put a bit of a horizon line there. I'll grab my applicating brush and we'll get some retarder and white. And let's get that onto the sky. Get it right in there. Don't muck around when you're priming up a board or a... Uh, canvas just get the stuff right on there get it right down into the bottom area as well because we're going to have reflective water not reflective water we're going to have water so it'll be reflecting the colors more so to speak from the sky all right <laughs> okay we've got our board primed up in the liquid white, flowing stuff with frittata. Now down here we want some blue, okay? All right, we've got our blue, and we, we need a bit of retarder in this as well. And we want to lace some of this blue into the sky, so I'll get a smaller brush. We want, want sort of a paler sky. We don't want such a hard, dark one. So we'll get this, where are we? We'll get this sort of up there. Turn my brush around, come down to our horizon line where we know it's going to be. See, I'm jiggle jaggling that into the canvas there. Jiggle jaggle it into there. See what I've done? And into the, that's roughly my horizon line there. Jiggle jaggle it. That's our word for the day. Jiggle jaggle that all in there. Now I'm brushing that in there. Look how that flowed into that white surface that we primed up there. I'm going to wipe that, not washing it. We'll get a bit more paint and maybe just jiggle jaggle some darkness up the top there. Just like that. And then we're going to get our beautiful lady with a dress. Okay, we've got my two inch blending brush. All right, so come over here. All right, let's blend all this now because it's all brush strokes. So we'll blend everything in beautiful and lovely and luscious and artistically and good. All right, so we've got some. Now, wipe your brush as you blend. Twisting it, dabbing it on and off. Because this isn't going to have too many clouds in the sky, but we want a nice, colourful light sky coming down to the atmosphere creating the round planet that we live in now I'll pick up some more of that blue with the retarder in there find our horizon line with the darker color blue uh yeah well, okay get a reasonably straight line across there like that boom turn your brush around give it another stroke there we go that's pretty level and then we want to bring that down into lighter colors here see it's coming light wipe the brush on a paper towel And I want to bring that into lighter. I need a bigger brush. I love using big brushes. Okay, I want a bit more paler. So I'm going to pick up some white from the bottom and bring it up.
and that retarder has allowed that to merge and blend on a great in a great way and I wanted that horizon line a bit darker because it's deep out there all right I think we need just a little bit of clouds in the sky there okay let's have a look at the reference picture now this is a bit cartoony this reference picture but we're going to bring it more to life but that's our reference what we're going to have in our painting all right I'm going to put some good quality white down on my palette there I'll pick up my hog bristle fan brush this is just my favorite brush I like doing clouds with okay use whatever you've got and we'll probably put something whispery up into the sky here just something whispery there there we go it whispered across there grab a blending brush and blend them into the that wet retarded blue sky look at that see how easy that does it and then we'll put some beautiful fluffy clouds just in front of this wipe your brush as you go don't be shy to wipe your brush all right see see what i'm doing i'm crisscrossing me twisting as well and me blending so it creates all sorts of pulls and patterns into that blended paint there you're not just doing it in one easy go okay now the trick is wash that brush that you put your first layer of clouds on with all right and load it up again but let's not get too busy and put too many clouds into that sky now here's a fun bit we'll put like a, a let's say a cloud here you make the top of your cloud let's make the top of our cloud there's the top of my cloud there. Now this cloud can come down into the atmosphere. All right, now we'll, we'll just blend this cloud down to the water line there. Wipe your brush and tickle the tops a little bit. Tickle the tops, just soften them. There we go, look at that. I'll wash that brush and we'll do something more proud on the other side where the island's going to be and something behind the top of the boat. So we're laying out our painting diagram. So we'll come across here and it's gonna go whoopsity daisy all the way up there like that. What a cloud, see how easy that was? Just a lot of mucking around with a brush. Grab your blending brush, blend, tassel it out, dab it in there. Wipe it, wipe it, wipe it's important. I'm gonna redo the water line there too later. I should have done these clouds before I did the horizon line, but not to worry. Now we'll just tickle the top of them. We create nice, soft, beautiful clouds. Look at that. Now this cloud, it looks all right, but it's a bit flat. So let's not leave it flat. Let's pump it up with life and give it another one just in front there. And this one can go down to the atmosphere. Okay, there we go. Wipe your blending brush and leave the top, leave the top. And this is going down to the atmosphere. That's, that's all right. We're not putting bottoms on these. It's just putting another cloud in front of that one we put there. Pass all the tops a bit. All right, I'm gonna use that brush just to get the bulk off there. Cause all this paint underneath, it's still wet cause it's been retarded. All right, so I've just loaded this up again. So we'll just get that horizon line back in there. Nice and straight. There we go. I'll wipe it and I'll bleed it into the water down here. I'll use my other brush just to, because it's bigger and got more control. That's it. There we go. It wasn't too hard, was it? Eh? <laughs> hey, now we'll put some foreground colour here and blend it in. All right, we're gonna quickly lace in some front shoreline sand before it dries. So I'm just grabbing a basic yellow oxide. If you're more familiar with a better sand color, use those. But in this one, I'm just gonna use a yellow oxide and some white. 
and we'll put a little bit of tartar in there as well there we go about that much like that grab yourself a flathead brush all right so i'm mixing up that white with some yellow oxide now what i'm going to do i'm just going to put this on the bottom like that and roughly come up the sides a bit keep pulling it on the brush crisscross it into that water all right Get some more in there, some darker colours at the front here. There we go, look at that. It's just basic putting a shore on into the... Okay, you've done that. Now you want to you want to tassel that into the, into the ocean there. So grab yourself another blending brush and then let's just tassel that into that blue so it's breaking it up just like that with a nice beautiful simple controlling blending brush wipe your blending brush as you go and then this here tassel it in horizontal sort of strokes so you're blending it not in a circular round fluffy motion it's sort of keeping some horizontalness there just blending that like that It's all in the brush stroke, everything you do in your art. You feel it. You feel it in your strokes. If you've got a good stroking motion going on, you can feel that something good, great is going to happen on your canvas. Now, picking up just some of the yellow oxide now in the brush. Get some of that on there. And let's darken up some areas in long, that's it, long motions. Just, just like that. And wipe your brush and then the very bottom here That'll do it. it's just a bit darker than what's already up there now grab that blending brush you blended before and do the same you, you blended this into the blue now you want to blend this into that all right so we're carrying on wipe your brush wipe your brush there's nothing to it it's no science it's just common sense to once you know how it's done, you'll be thinking, my God, is that all it was? And I was mucking around the other way. There we go. Look at that. All right, we've got some good quality white and we want to make up our you know, our water coming onto the sand. So I've just used a smaller fan brush. When you practice these, you'll know what sort of brush works good for you. So I'm coming along with this, like that. Wipe the brush, because you're getting that contaminated white paint off it. Load it up again, and then come along, wipe the brush up there. Now, we want to grab another brush. I'm going to use my little scenery flathead furred out brush. Now, watch what I do here. I'm getting it, and if anything, I'm bringing the tops up and back into the water, okay? Just like that. But I don't want to do it all the one angle. I've got to sort of keep it in perspective with the painting. Just like that. How's that looking on the monitor, okay? We'll sort of come up there, blending that back into the water. It's not a violent shore, it's just a nice, subtle, soft water caressing along the, the shore here. You can, if you want, break that up just like that and blend that back as well. Just so it's soft, beautiful shoreline. Ah, I'm happy with that. That's looking good. It's just water coming forward. It's not doing nothing else but coming forward. That's what you want. Now down here, I've got my script liner and I've got my raw umber. I'm going to use this for the shadow under the breaking water. 
twist it onto your brush. You should know how to do this by now, but for those of you who are just starting, you get this liner loaded up with wet paint and you twist it onto your point. And then we got to just get some shadow under here. Just twist, don't think about it, just get it on there. My head's not in the way. Keep an eye on that monitor. If my head's in the way, say yeah, something, no, Jeff. No. There we go. We're sort of putting some shadow. I'm twisting the brush as I go to get it to come off the brush. Wipe your brush a little bit and reload it again. And it's just sitting those waves onto the shoreline there. Everything's beautiful, moist and wet from that retarder. It's been able to carry on like a... Um, oil paint nice and glossy and wet see what this is doing it's just sitting that down and we can probably just put the minutest bit of darks in here not too much all right we've done that much now what we need to do is blow dry this so we can get the rest of the colors on because the rest of the colors is just painting it's not a awful lot of getting things to bleed and blend and merge and be succulent together all right so i'm going to blow dry this what we want to do now is map in this island at the back there so i've just done a rough pencil outline i don't want to go under the waterline so i'm just going to use yellow oxide with some white in there okay now the the island's virtually going to be this color and some green growing over it. So we'll get this roughly mapped in there first where we want it, covering our pencil line up. And getting it over here. It doesn't have to be too dark because it's in the distance, remember? I might just sharpen up that edge out here just to make it look a bit more artistic there we go now i want to darken that up a little bit at the top now if you feel this might mud up which i think this is going to i'm going to dry it and then i'll add the next color okay next color i'm getting my forest green it's a bit too dark so i've got to lighten it up to the temperament i want just like that let's get it all how I want it. So we'll just come along now and stamp in the top, let it blend into that sandy colour. That's the sandy beach in the distant island. Just nice and gently tiptoe it, leaving a, a bank on there. Just something like that. We'll grab some darker one and we'll put some foliage on it. I'm just pulling it up there. I'll use the corner of my brush, pull the other side up, but I want it pulled up so it's tearing at the end of my stroke. Because sometimes your strokes need to be torn at the end. Just like that, see? These are just like distant bush well see that's that didn't tear at the end that one so what i'll do i'll wipe that brush it's then we're gonna tear it Ugh, there we go i've just torn it and then thicken it up make it busy down there just like that now down here i've got a smaller flathead brush still using that green i'm lightening it up with some more white again so these are real distant palms so we'll just put a simple trunk like that and then we'll give him a simple little palm leaves how I've shown you to do these before there we go I want a few pale ones just so as we can um, enhance them with our darker ones later okay so Let's get another one way up here somewhere. And give him his palm tree. It's not a big island. It's just a little private one where a man and his woman goes 
to spend their time together because they're in love. And we'll get one out here. These are just the pale ones, okay? All right. Now, picking up the forest green again, but darker value of it, I've wetting it a bit. We want to get our main palms in there, so we'll get one about here. These are virtually in front of those ones that you've just put on, because it's probably a palm island, you know? Who knows? It's the palm island of love. There we go, one there. And we'll probably put one leeching out over. Oh, I better chisel up the edge of your brush so it's nice and flat. Get this one right over there. These are pretty easy to do once you know how to do them. There we go. And now we'll get one more darker one, just a bit more darker. And probably put a one up here. <sighs> wet them. See how that paint is not quite wet enough. That broke. So I'm wetting it again. We want it pointy there and coming a bit wider at the bottom. Don't want it. Oh, see, that's a bit too fat, if anything, but too late. It's there now. And, oh. Give him some beautiful, simple palm tree, palm leaves. Now because this island is in the distance, it needs some kind of water washing against it. Grab a good quality white and a knife and butter it flat. So you've got a flat ribbon or a flat sheet of paint on your palette there. Wipe your knife and then get it on its edge, pull it through. Okay, look at that beautiful bit of paint on there. And then very thinly, let's just get some, yeah, look at that. You don't want a solid line there. See, that one's a bit too fat if you ask me. That one's all right. And something out there. So we've just got the water hitting and I'll do some over here on the horizon as well. Okay, so we've just got some crispy water out there. And because this is an island, there's a lot of water breaking up against it out there. It's very hard to stop and very easy to keep doing this and mess around with it. All right, we're getting there. So now what we've got to do now, this is this is the part of the, the video you can stop and go, let's not neglect our coffee. Jeff's made me one here, haven't you, Jeff? I did. Yeah. Um, we can blow dry this, ready to stencil on the boat, whether you call it a, a long neck boat, a gondola, I don't know, it's probably got a proper name. It's one of those ones in an Asian country anyway. and then um, that'll probably be it. Now we'll get our traceable picture that we've got. I've just printed out a picture of the boat. The rest we don't need to trace in. So the boat, just to get it looking the way it is, I've printed it out the size I roughly want it. And we're gonna put it about there. All right, so I'm gonna take that to my canvas like that. Put this down here. We'll put our carbon paper under our boat. Now, if you don't have carbon paper, you can put your picture back to front against the window with light source behind it, get lead pencil and trace it, then turn it the other way and trace it onto your canvas and that'll work as well. Now, grab yourself a red pen. Why I say a red pen, we've got that there not moving. Uh, a red pen, you can see what you've already carboned out from your traceable, okay? We'll bring that down there like that. All right, we've traced that out. Now we'll pull it off the, grab yourself a pencil. We've got it on there and we'll just sort of 
fill in the gaps with the pencil sometimes where you've missed things out instead of putting it all back and trying to trace it so there we've got a couple of ribbons around here we've got the basics of what we need we can paint in these planks we didn't have to trace everything in there all right Now using my phalo blue and the white, I want to mix up some lighter values of watercolour and get some tassely bits underneath that boat going, alright? So before I block in the boat, I just want to sort of make some kind of ripple just like this coming from the back of the boat, just like this like it is in the picture and that way we, we can bring the boat over this there we go we've got some sort of ripply movement under the boat all right i'm getting my burnt sienna i've got I've added white so I've got three different shades of it. In the back here where we have the the darkness and those battens going across like for the seating I'll just paint all the dark colour in there first and then I'll white the battens over the top of this instead of doing finical little bits okay. So we'll get this darker colour in there first and I'm just choosing to use the burnt sienna as the different tone browns for this boat, okay? So we got that there. Now you want to dry this so as these other bits you put in don't bleed into that and go all yucky. All right, now I've got the lighter tone. Now I'll put my, what have they got? They've got about three in there. So we'll just do the same. We'll put three in there. We'll one across there, one across there. Maybe one across there. Now we'll use this colour as well for the side of the boat in here. Make sure your brush is nice and chiselled and clean so you can get nice tight. See how this gets nice tight edges against there? Now it's breaking up as you can see. Get a bit of water on your brush just to make it flow off your brush onto the canvas easier. And we want this all the way in this colour here. See how that's abated some water? See how it's pulling off the brush and onto the canvas a lot better. Get it on there and get your job done. Don't muck around with it, just get it done. And if you feel it needs another coat, do another coat later. So we're putting all this colour onto the boat. We'll get around here. Now it's on this top edge here. That's why we've got three different shades. So I'll get it along here. <laughs> Try and cover up your pencil lines as you go. Okay, we got him up there. Now we're going to use the middle tone colour just for this bit here I could see. So we've got a middle tone colour here. Wet the brush a little bit. so we can break up the different shadows in this boat because the different tones that you've mixed up will create the shadow areas of your boat virtually this one here is a mid-tone Just getting this boat shaded in. I'm using the medium, the light, and the darker ones just to get some different colours in here. As well, lighter values. 
probably up about here. There we go, and then we'll put the actual detail over all this. There we go, blend that in like that. Makes it look more softer. What have we got up there? We've got some lighter values in this big post as well, so we'll get some water on that brush. It's nice and sharp against the edge there. Load it up again, just so your edge is nice and sharp. It and we're going against that medium tone there. There we go. All right, still just adding some bits of mediums and lights here up and down the front of the boat. I'm going to block those ribbons in last so they'll sit over that pole. Darker colour. And we'll put some of that against this post here. And come out. Grab the medium colour. Put it back and blend into there. use me line I just want to get these lines of um, the the planks I'll join that up to that one I'll bring that one across as well and that one there and there's another one there now what I like to do I'm just gonna put my own touch on these light at the bottom and bring them a bit darker at the top just like that it's wet I've wiped the brush and I'm going to grab the middle tone that I've mixed up and then get them painted in there just so we've got some sort of board type on the side of the boat because that's the type of boat it is you don't want to lose the the type that it is. Now I'm going to wipe the brush or the paint off it using the same brush and blend that light into that dark just like so. So we've got a you, you, I wanted a soft blend. You don't have to have it a soft blend. It's up to you. And we'll get a bit over here. And then we'll just get a touch of the darker one and bring it into there and bring it in merge that into there that's how I want it I'm happy with that now for the canopy I'm grabbing my phalo blue now I'm gonna get some white okay let's mix up some white over here and I'm going for one two three tones okay so the dark tone is the less so the middle tone is there and then we'll grab some more and we'll lighten that one up again. So we've got three tones of white blue mixed together. All right, I'm going to start with the darker tone blue and I'm using a flathead brush again because I can get a nice sharp line with it. And I'm going to come in the middle of the top of that boat there like that. And look at that, you get a beautiful straight line with that flathead brush. So long as your paint is moistened up enough and don't forget this is coming there get the dimensions back into your boat I've got a bit of a I'll fix that up there there we go Now we'll use this same brush, I'm just wiping it. I'm getting the medium colour that I've mixed up. And I want to 
bring this across there like so like so we'll get the the roof done now the medium it's pretty much close to the watercolor we'll have to change that for the painting's sake now I'll wipe the brush grab the lighter color we'll just do these in the lighter color the the side bit and then I'll go a bit lighter again on that I might have to do those side posts again get the lighter color up here Now I'm going to get the darker colour, I've just wiped that paint off the brush, I want to grab the darker colour blue, and we'll get this side of the awning done. Now see how that's washing the lighter colour back? When that happens, that's with the acrylic, that's where you can blow dry it. So I'm going to blow dry this now so I can get in all these colours without it mudding up. Alright, we'll finish this off with his um, coloured ribbons that they've got on this boat. So we've got a, a blue one coming up here. around the pole and we'll add some white colors and textures into here not textures values just to give it that ribbony look so I'll put him there all right grab some darker blue now let's just get this a bit cleaner there I'll grab some darker blue out here around the pole and around the ribbon itself just so it looks like some sort of values in there you know picking up the white there's still a little bit of blue contaminated on my brush and now we want to just add some other lighter values into those darker ones there just to break it up make it look like there's a big bow here or something and down here It has sort of like a big buckle thing there. There we go. Okay, now the next colour I've got is just simple primary red. Use whatever red shade you're, you like. I'm just using primary red. So we'll get that pulled along our boat here. And then we'll come up to this ribbon. See, normally red, if you got the time, which I do not have today, I would have painted all this white first. I'm running out of time here. We'll get all this ribbon in red.
Now I'm wiping the, wiping the brush, picking up some blue, which will make that red a darker value. And I want to work out, all right, we need some darker values over this red now, and then we can highlight it. picking up some white and now we want to just get this sort of highlighted as well there we go all right she's ready for a frame but I better sign it first no, we'll do it in black so what I'll we I'll sign it over here in the water Okay, right, we'll whack a frame on there and see how she looks. There you go, we've got our distant island, we've got our boat, we've got the beautiful sky, a simple foreground, that's not too shabby, eh? Alright, I hope you like what I did there, it's a simple exercise for you beginners. Now if you like what I do, you tell a friend, but if you don't, you tell everybody, alright? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.